Greetings. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks Sr., your host, and this is Community Forum. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an outstanding person uh, this evening. Uh, she's a community activist. Uh, her name is uh, Ellen Ewing, and she's the president of the Board of Directors for Growing Healthy Veterans. Good evening, uh, Ellen. Good evening, Dr. Brooks. We're very happy that you've taken time from your busy schedule to be with us on the Community Forum uh, to tell, our to tell uh, Lake County about growing healthy veterans, which they probably hadn't thought about. But Lake County is approximately, oh, uh, 850,000 people, and uh, it airs on Channel 17 every Thursday night at 7 p.m., and not only in uh, Lake County, but it airs in Cook County and Kenosha County. And uh, if you have not been known around the world, you will be after this program because it's online at drbrooks.tv. Okay. You can watch it from China and Australia and everywhere because it's online. Well, with that, tell our listening audience a little bit about your personal and professional background. Well, I have spent, I got a, a, my education was in early childhood development, oh. but I soon got pulled into working with food, and um, for the majority of my working life, I was in sales and dealing with the sa sale of different kinds of food. Um, I also worked in restaurants and um, ran a catering business for a short period of time, but it, most of my life it's been centered around he good, healthy food. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, tell us how, when, and where did Growing uh, Healthy Veterans began? Well, in the summer of 2013, Lucan Paulus, um, who was our, one of our co-founders, okay. uh, volunteered to help Yvette Ewing um, with the Fuller Center in uh, Waukegan, yes. um, they had been given a corner lot in southeast Waukegan by the uh, Forest Preserve, and they wanted to turn it into a community garden. Mm -hmm. And so he had just decided that he was very interested in gardening. He had been working with young children doing social work, but he spent a lot of time working with the young children, working with growing, and so he decided he wanted to get do more with this. So he volunteered to get this garden growing, and during the course of the summer, he met another woman who was also volunteering, and um, I met both of them, and the three of us got very excited about the possibility of um, doing a not-for-profit having to do with food um, so in the fall, all three of us read an article in Organic Gardening, the magazine Organic Gardening, okay. called The Battle Worth Fighting by Delaney Ellis. And um, as I said, we'd been thinking about starting a non nonprofit to teach people to grow sustainable, healthy food, but we didn't know what our focus should be. And this article did it. It was about the tremendous need for new farmers I'm um, quoting a 2012 study by the USDA that suggested that we need 100,000, no, 1 million new farmers in the next 10 years to fill the gap from the farmers that are aging out. Yes, we're in our country, yeah. In our country, yes. Okay. Um, and Delaney, the author, suggested that there's one group of young adults who could help solve this crisis, mm -hmm. and that's the young men and women returning from the various wars. Um, she states that, quote, they have learned how to endure long hours and physical duress. They have been taught strategic planning and risk assessment and have had a lot to do with a little to survive. And these are the same characteristics that make good farmers. So, Lucan decided to enter the College of Lake County and get his certification in sustainable agriculture. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we decided to form this not-for-profit. Um, Lucan and I met an Air Force veteran named Marshall Fox at an employment fair, and we uh, brought him into the organization. But we soon realized that the, the organization was not able to sustain all of us. Mm 
Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to start a not-for-profit without much money, and especially okay. when you have a number of people that need to be making some money. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Marshall and Lucan and I left, and Lucan and I started a small company growing microgreens, and Marshall got a job at the Federal Health Care Center um, in their transportation department. Mm -hmm. um, but we stayed in touch, and uh, Lucan continued uh, attending these uh, Friday groups that Dr. J uh, John Baird does at the Federal Health Care Center for Veterans with PTSD. Yes. And he, um, he ran into Marshall, um, who had met a recreational therapist in his work at the FHCC and had told her about horticulture therapy and how healing that was for veterans. And she was very interested. So the three of them got together and she decided she wanted to include um, horticulture therapy in her program. Mm -hmm. So our not-for-profit was formed called Growing Healthy Veterans. And uh, Lucan um, was able to get the Liberty Prairie Foundation um, donated one full garden plot and two half garden plots to use over the spring and summer. Um, and the veterans would come from the Federal Health Care Center on Saturdays mm -hmm. and spend an hour or two in the garden. And at the end of the summer, um, it was considered a great success. And so Lucan continued working with them over the winter uh, doing horticulture therapy. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned uh, two groups there. You have uh, um, Growing Healthy Veterans, and then you mentioned a not-for-profit organization in Lake Counties. Was that different? The first one was called Growing Healthy People, and they are still in existence. They um, work with school kids um, in Lake Forest, and I think like, no, Lake Forest, well, uh, possibly North Chicago, but also um, they just uh, are now starting to work with a school in Waukegan. Okay. So they've taken their uh, not-for-profit one direction and we've taken ours another. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, for those that may have uh, a question, what is horticultural therapy? Well, horticulture therapy mm -hmm. is a, I'm gonna just read a little bit because it explains it much better than I do, I okay. can myself. Okay. But this is a, a quote from a woman who was president of the Northeastern Horticulture Therapy Association. Mm -hmm. And she's been a horticulture therapist for 22 years. And she said, I've had veterans leave my program who are totally different individuals from when they came in. I had someone in a wheelchair a few years ago and we built a special raised bed for him and he had his own garden. And I'll tell you, it was the most beautiful raised bed garden I have ever seen. Before that, he was not taking care of himself. He got improved so much that he started a job and was ma able to maintain himself in a much better fashion. Mm -hmm. And uh, another quote is from the Horticulture Therapy Association website that says, horticulture therapy is not only an emerging profession, it is a time-proven practice. The therapeutic benefits of, peaceful garden, of the peaceful garden environment have been understood since ancient times. In the 19th century, Dr. Benjamin Rush, a signer of the De Declaration of Independence and considered to be the father of American psychiatry, reported that garden, the garden setting held curative effects for people with mental is issues. And I think um, most people will understand that do any gardening. There's a real peace that comes from working with the soil. Mm -hmm. That's basically what horticulture therapy is. Sometimes it's more structured, but the point is to connect people with the soil and with living things. You know, Ellen, I'm learning along with my listening audience, you know, about growing healthy veterans. Um, <coughs> so it's, it's uh, you mentioned by Veterans are going from the battlefields uh, to the farm fields, that's right? That's right. That's what, that's the goal is to get, obviously not all the veterans that come into the program, yeah. but to get some of them to be interested in into um, raising good healthy food. Because as I said, we need 
new farmers and we especially need them in the Midwest because right now as of um, 20 I think it was 2014 only 4 percent I think I'm, mm -hmm. I may not have these figures exactly right but 4 percent of the food that's consumed in Lake County is grown in Lake County uh. so we get the majority of our food from other places yeah. now the most of it comes from the West Coast but we all know what's happening out there. Even with the rains that they have, there's, there's still a tremendous drought, and it could be that we're not gonna be able to sustain feeding people healthy food from there. So we need to start growing our own good healthy food here mm -hmm. in what used to be the bread basket of the United States. Okay, uh -huh. um, um, and you, we, also, we mentioned the battlefields to the farm fields, but from the battlefields, we have veterans with mental health issues, um, trauma, and also moral injuries. That's right? correct. That's correct. Um, I, I feel really strongly, one of the reasons that this is such an important mission for me is I think if the majority of people in this country were to see a movie that I watched last week, which was called um, Thank you for your service. Okay. And it shows what happens to these young men and women when they're over fighting these battles for us and how difficult it is for them to come back and readjust and the, the guilt and, and um, different things that affect them. Um, it just is, it's so important that we help them get an opportunity to heal. and. And this is where I want to put in a plug for the Federal Health Care Center because, you know, we read that the VA is not doing its job. A lot of people feel that, that veterans aren't getting the kind of care that they need. Well, unfortunately, they're not, but it's not because of the VA. It's because of the funding to the VA. But the mm -hmm. staff, especially the staff that we know at the Federal Health Care Center, is just outstanding and they're trying to do everything that they can but with this limited funding and that's why it was so wonderful when Suzanne Brown became so excited about our program because it allowed her to expose the, her veterans to another form of therapy without an added expense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, funding is always uh, a challenge you know to any organization uh, but if people want to donate, uh, uh, how do they do it? Well, they can go on our website, which is www.growinghealthyveterans.org, and um, there's a donate button. Um, we do not have our 501c3 right now. We're in the process of filling, uh, finishing the application, but okay. we do have a fiscal agent and our fiscal agent is down in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh. And so any money that's donated to us goes through the fiscal agent and it then becomes tax deductible to the person that is donating. So if they press that donate button and donate, um, they will then get a letter and whatever they donated is, is uh, tax deductible to the full extent of the law. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you mentioned growing healthy veterans. It is therapeutic for veterans suffering from, and we mentioned about the related disorders, and also for PTSD that's available at the Captain James A. Lovell Federal Health Care Center. And I know what Dr. Um, John Baer there yes. is doing a, doing a fantastic job with, uh, with the veterans. Uh, we, we have families that have to get adjusted too there's uh, oh, yes. because a lot of families don't accept the veterans coming back because they don't, don't understand why they act the way they do but That's if they right. get a better understanding of what happens to them in in the military such a war in the right. war you know and so forth then they would uh, you know uh, be a little more understanding well, and that's why our program is not just for veterans, but it's also for the whole family. Okay. Um, and this is cr also crucial because, um, you know, one of the statistics that demonstrate 
the difficulty that veterans are having is the high suicide rate. Yes. Um, it's a 20, in 2016, it was 20.6 veterans a day wow. were committing suicide. And, and this was a really startling, 18 caregivers of veterans were co committing suicide because it's devastating to the wives and parents of these kids when they come back and they, yeah. as you said, they don't recognize them. They have to give them care. They worry about them. They worry about, because there's often drugs and alcohol involved because they're self-medicating themselves from the traumas that they've experienced and stuff. So um, we're really um, adamant that this program that we have um, is so important because we want to do everything that we can to help both the veterans, but also, as I said, their families and their um, the caregivers and the communities. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. You're right. And not only families, but communities are affected also. So uh, there is a, this is a healing process. It didn't say that all of them will be healed. Right. You it's know, a process. It's a process. And it gives them, even if it's just a little respite, even if it's just, you know, a, a, an hour or so, a week or two, where they feel peace and they feel connected, um, it, uh, it's very important. Mm -hmm. And it, that connection is also important, especially to veterans who have a strong, have been brought up in a strong religious yeah. background. They have to deal with the fact that they had to do things when they were in the war that go against what their Christian teachings were, or religious teachings were. Mm -hmm. okay. They had to kill people, and um, that's often very, very hard for them to adjust to when they come back. The fact that they haven't, they've done things that are considered wrong. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. things. This is not a problem just with the veterans um, post 9/11, but it's also um, a huge problem. For veterans from Vietnam who are okay. now, um, a lot of them have, when they came back, they just sort of were able to stuff everything away. And then as they got older and retired and couldn't, you know, get away from the nightmares and things, there's a huge um, amount, number of suicides among both um, the Vietnam War veterans and some from the K Korean veterans. So it's, uh, it has no age. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Limit or it's good that the the government realized to the uh, the problems. There was a uh, what Agent Orange, I guess we call it, from right. the uh, from the Vietnam from the War. Vietnam that war too, and they finally recognized it, and they are providing treatment right for it. But know? it took a long time, right. and there are a number of uh, offspring okay. um, who are still. We have a neighbor who. Both of her children are suffering um, with debilitating illnesses that are a result of Agent Orange. So mm -hmm. um, there's a lot, um, mm -hmm. but you just have to keep looking for the best way to help in whatever way you can. Now, are there um, <clears throat> employment opportunities uh, for su substantial ag agriculture? Well, y yes, and that's why in our mission, one of the the final thing is, is line of our mission um, is to help veterans um, with, that, with um, gaining employment. And it's interesting because originally when we started out, we were focusing on w wanting to create farmers and help okay. them find okay. um, employment by growing things. Um, and as we've expanded and, and grown and also because we have an unbelievable board and, and people that have been helping us, we've realized that there are many, many more opportunities for employment in the agricultural field. Um, but the bottom line is we're helping veterans with employment just by helping them heal. Okay. Because okay. if they're able to heal enough from the traumas that they've been suffering, yeah. then they're much more likely to get any kind of employment. Um, so it's a much broader base than what we thought we were going to 
uh, just be dealing with. Tell us about the opportunities uh, for uh, growing healthy veterans in Gurney. Is that a project that you are uh, working on there? Right. Well, um, <coughs> it's very interesting. Um, we had our first two years, we just grew um, in the, uh, in, at Prairie Crossing in their community garden. The second okay. year we doubled the number of plots mm. and we also got a plot of land from uh, Joy Lutheran Church. And then um, at the end of that growing season, the board of directors met. We had a, um, a meeting, a strategic <coughs> planning meeting. Mm -hmm. And we went over what we felt were all the pluses and all the obstacles. And there were very few obstacles um, compared to the plus side, but one of them was that we really needed land that was closer to the Federal Health Care Center. Okay. And um, so we were really out there looking for different opportunities. And I was at a meeting um, of this organization of veterans groups in Lake County, and I met the commander of the Gurney American Legion at the time, Jim Husiel. Okay. Uh, who's now the former commander, but he was at this meeting. Uh, it was on suicide prevention, actually. And um, I went up to talk to him, introduce myself, told him that um, at a board meeting, probably two or three months prior to this, um, I had brought up the idea in, when we were looking for land to mm -hmm. look to see a lot of these American legions and VFWs mm -hmm. have land Okay. Uh, you know, big parking lots and big and pieces of land and that maybe we could um, s get them to start doing some um, raised beds. We don't need to have actual in-dirt gardening. We could have different ways of, yeah. of uh, making, um, having our program with them. And that this, we felt that this was would be a great way to help them increase their membership mm -hmm. um, okay. because they're suffering uh, from the fact that there aren't uh, many young people that are joining these organizations. When mm -hmm. you go to the uh, VFWs and the American Legions, um, the members that are there are all much older and they're not getting the younger members. Mm -hmm. So I was explaining all this to um, Commander Husiel and his face just lit, lit up and I thought, and he said, I'm having a board meeting tonight. I will call you tomorrow morning. So he called me the next morning and he told me that they had two and a half acres um, that's con that the, the Legion owns, the American Legion owns on Milwaukee Avenue. They're just south of Grand and that they would like us to have um, our program there. Okay. And so I um, went to another board member, Roy Click, who's head of the horticulture department and also talked to Will Allen, who is a big supporter of ours and uh, we all feel like we're his fan club. But mm -hmm. anyway, he is a, a, an urban farmer in Milwaukee. He's internationally known. And so I talked to both of them about how best to use this land because we knew we couldn't grow in it. It's um, obviously landfill. And so Will offered to um, donate the frame for a hoop house mm -hmm. so that we could start by putting hoop houses on this. Mm -hmm. And so I went back to Jim and I um, told him this idea and I said, you know, I really would love it if you could come with me up to Milwaukee and meet Will Allen and see if this is something that you think would be good. So on the way up, I'm talking to him and I said, tell me, Commander, what, what did I say that made <laughs> your face light up? Because I said, I've never had that experience with anybody before. Mm -hmm. So I need to know what it was. And yeah. he said, well, he said, it's all timing. He had had a veteran that had come to do community service work through the veteran court at the Legion. And he was a younger veteran and he was talking to him afterwards. And he said, why can't we get you young people to join? Uh, and this veteran said, you know, Commander, most of us have drug and alcohol problems. And oh. the last thing that we need to do is to be sitting around <laughs> in bars. He said, you get something for us to do mm -hmm. and we'll be there. So okay. that was three days before I presented him with this idea. So it worked out perfectly. 
So actually, what did you do while you were waiting for the Gurney project to get zoning? Well, we had that was taking a little bit more time than we had originally anticipated. So we decided we would continue looking for land in North Chicago. Uh. And one of the things that we did when uh, after we had had the strategic planning meeting and one of the we raised this issue of the needing to be closer to the federal health care center. Okay. Um, we contacted Vance Wyatt, okay. who um, was, is the Lake County um, member. A, a county commissioner. For that area of yeah, North Chicago. Yeah. Um, and um, he took us around, showed us some possible sites. But the thing that he did that was really so wonderful for us um, was he uh, introduced us to this um, a woman, Amer uh, an African American woman vet who lives in North Chicago, Donna King. Yes. And um, I, she agreed to be on our board. Mm. And so um, she came to the first board meeting and we were talking about finding land in North Chicago and she said, I don't understand why you can't, there's all this land. And I said, well, we had gone to talk to Mayor Rockingham, but mm. he had not had a really good experience with community gardens before and so he wasn't overly enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. So apparently she went to him and told him that if he didn't give us land, <laughs> that she was going to allow us to grow on her side lot. <laughs> That's Donna King. That's Donna <laughs> King. And she also, she feels, and this is something that she and I share, um, that there really needs to be a lot more interaction between the military and the city of North Chicago. Yeah. And so she arranged a meeting in the mayor's office um, concerning employment. Um, with people from the Federal Health Care Center and from Lake County and from the city. Yeah. And um, one of the things that was presented was our program that that could start employment. And so the mayor uh, talked to me afterwards and said, come and see me, I have land for you. So it worked. Uh, thanks to Donna King. Thanks to Donna King. You know. um, so that was the process in North Chicago to right. get to get the land. And you said that was located where? It's on Dugdale and Arrington. Okay. Which is just south of 14th Street. Yeah. And it's a big piece of land. We have 14 plus acres. Wow. Now, we are starting small. Our first what we call phase 1 is um we're only using uh, 150 feet by 150 feet, which is a little over, almost two acres, a little under two acres. Um, and of that, only 100 by 100 is our um, garden, which we're calling North Chicago Commons. Okay. And it's a community garden for residents of North Chicago, veterans, and active military. Mm. And um, it's extremely exciting because we have all of those involved. We have veterans that come every week from um, the Federal Health Care Center okay. for the, the uh, horticulture therapy and to be in the garden. We have residents that have gotten ga garden plots, lots of children, mm -hmm. and then we also um, have um, the naval base is going to start sending their recruits there to help and to grow food for the residents of North Chicago. So um, this year it's, it's uh, we had a plan where we would have 20 garden plots plus two big plots for um, the horticulture therapy, a section that will have raised beds, like I spoke about uh, in the, in my, a discussion about horticulture therapy. Mm -hmm. We'll have a wheelchair accessible raised bed. We'll, we're going to have um, an area that's going to be covered where people can sit and socialize or where we can have cooking demonstrations oh. or um, culinary uh, activity. Culinary, <laughs> yes. Well, you want to teach people how to eat, the, how to cook the good healthy food. Okay. So that's the whole plan. Well, it took us a while to get started. So we're not quite there, but we just got a wonderful grant from the Home Depot 
um, which will allow us to purchase everything else that we need. So by next summer, um, we will have um, at least 20 garden plots. A third of those will be for, or actually half of them will be for residents of North Chicago. And then the other half will be split between veterans and active duty military. And the majority of food that will be grown there by either the veterans from the FHCC or the active duty um, will go to food pantries in North oh. Chicago. Oh, wow. Now, is this a, a voluntary activity from the uh, VA? Uh, from, uh, from the VA, yes, they come over. It's For most of them, it's part of their therapy. Okay. Um, but we have a number of homeless veterans, and then we have veterans that, um, that live in Lake County. We have several veterans that have come and gotten garden plots on their own, and they're residents, maybe not of North Chicago, but some, they live somewhere in Lake County, and they come over to be able to grow their own food. So, well, tell us again um, um, how the listening audience can donate and and uh, and what to what to do. Uh, what direction would you give them if to uh, if they would like to volunteer? Well, the donation the is easy. Um, you can they can just go on our website www.growinghealthyveterans.org and press the donate button mm -hmm. um, in order to volunteer. They can also go on the website, and Lucan Paulus is our operations manager. He's listed on the page that has our board of directors with his phone number. They can either call him or they can call our other um, co-founder, Marshall Fox, who's the Air Force veteran that works at the FACC, and they will give them um, all the volunteer opportunities they could want. We're very flexible. If people want, we every Saturday afternoon, uh, there are people mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. But if people want to come sometime during the week, if there are groups that want to come sometime during the week, or um, other day, other times on Saturday, and that will apply also to the Gurney American Legion because on September fifteenth, mm -hmm. Will Allen will be coming down from uh, Milwaukee with the the um, frame and we will be erecting a 40 by a 20 by 48 foot hoop house wow and so that's going to be a big volunteer day so anybody that would love to learn how to build a hoop house they're welcome to come and help us um, but they're also welcome to come and volunteer to work in the hoop house um, the things that we grow in the hoop house that it's going to be just a little different um, because we want to start becoming a, more sustainable ourselves, um, a third of what's grown in the hoop house will be sold at uh, either to restaurants or to farmers farmer, at a farmer's market. We'll probably have next year a big market stand because the area where the hoop houses will be is right next to the baseball fields. Uh -oh. And so every weekend there are families there for the baseball field. So we'll be selling some of the produce and then the other third will go to veterans and their families mm -hmm. and the final third goes to uh, North Chicago because um, we really feel that it's so important that the veterans help support the city of North Chicago. Um, it, uh, it's very healing in a way that they can feel that they're on a mission they are on a mission to help people that don't have access to, to good quality, fresh produce. And so they can help by growing it for them. Ellen, there's no doubt that you are a blessing to this area uh, from the man up above. <laughs> there's no doubt it. Well, you are definitely a hero. And I have to congratulate you on the efforts that you're making to make this a better community here in North Chicago, Gurney area. You know, well, I have to say thank you very much for that, but I can't take even a portion of the credit. I have such a strong board of directors. Tell us about your board. Well, it's very, it's varied. We have 
Um, as I said, Rory Click, who is head of the horticulture department okay. at um, the College of Lake County. Um, David Hussmuller, who is also at, at the College of Lake County, is head of their sustainability uh, program. Mm -hmm. um, our secretary, M Michelle Beauchanton, is married to Joe Beauchanton, who's head of the, uh, the veterans program at oh, CLC. Okay. So we have a very strong um, but Michelle is also a veteran. Uh, as I said, Marshall is a veteran. Mitchell Siegel, who I think many of your v viewers may have known, he uh, works for Catholic Charities in their Veterans Employment Program. Mm -hmm. um, and he is also a veteran. He's um, our vice president. Um, Donna King, who I me mentioned. Okay. Um, Vance Wyatt oh, okay. has just agreed to come on to our board. Um, Joy Williams, yeah. who is also a veteran, younger veteran, yeah. and has just taken this, a job working with the Legal Assistance Foundation of Chicago, uh, but oh. out here in Lake County. Um, and she was did an internship with Tammy Duckworth. So um, we're excited to have her on the board. Um, Let's see, who, uh, Jim Dolan, um, okay. who uh, is with the um, Illinois Joining Forces, mm -hmm. um, very important organ veteran organization. Um, Craig Scott is our new treasurer. Um, Craig is a global, a global social entrepreneur who is retired um, from Abbott Labs. He worked um, mainly in Asia and Europe, and he's a former Peace Corps volunteer. Okay. And then, last but certainly not least, Erlene Navy, who is an attorney yeah. in North Chicago. Right. Well, you have a strong board We have there. a strong, wonderful now, board. Now, tell about the donors. Uh, who, who well, the, we've had, as you, I said, we've... You we've mentioned been, Home Depot. Yes, the Home Depot. Um, the, uh, our bank, which is the State Bank of the Lakes. Okay. Um, the United Relief Foundation. Oh, I can't <laughs> leave them out because they were very supportive uh, of us in the beginning and continue to support us. They are going to be building the raised bed, the wheelchair accessible raised bed. Yeah. Um, Frank Salato, who's head of that, um, has been uh, donated many things, helped us initially to have a fundraiser. And mm -hmm. um, the Lake County Community Trust Foundation. Um, we got a grant from them in memory, and I'm just horrified that I don't have the name of the woman whose father, he, she lives in North Chicago, and her father um, passed away, and he was a veteran, but they, the grant came um, from them. Okay. Um, and then the Liberty Prairie Foundation, of course, has been a donor by giving us all the land that they've given us, and um, Joy Lutheran Church. And then the other thing, and it uh, gets to another very important thing, belief of mine as far as not-for-profits, and that is not-for-profits need to partner as much as possible. It's the only way that they're all, we're going to survive. We can't be in our little individual si silos. Um, and so we have a huge number of partner organizations, um, Catholic Charities, the United Relief Foundation, as I said, the three different areas of the College of Lake County, the Gurney American Legion, mm. the City of North Chicago, the Federal Health Care Center, Great Lakes Naval Station, Veterans Court, um, is partnering with us and uh, veterans that go through the court system will be allowed to do their community service in our gardens, mm -hmm. which is very exciting. Um, Faith in Place, um, Lake County Veterans and Family Services, the Veterans Community Partnership Network, which is the group that I uh, talked about that re meets every other month and that's where I met Jim Husiel. Mm -hmm. um, Grow Lake County, which is a new um, uh, initiative of the Liberty Prairie Foundation. Um, and then, of course, Will Allen has been an amazing partner. Uh, the USDA has a section um, called Good Greens, and they meet every other month in Chicago. 
and Alan Shannon, who's head of that, has been incredibly supportive of, of us. Um, Delaney Ellis, who I mentioned before, from um, the author of the article and the filmmaker, she made a, a film called From Battlefields to Farm Fields. Um, okay. And she's come and we've done three different showings of the film to raise money. Um, and then the Farmer Veteran Coalition in California, uh, Michael O'Gorman, who's head of that, has been a great uh, supporter of ours. Um, newer partners are the Lake County Farm Bureau. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim and I met with somebody uh, from there the other day. And then the University of Illinois Extension has also been a big um, Mr. James Reeves, I believe, is, uh, is at the university. Yeah, well, I think it's Highway 45. Uh-huh. Yeah, James yes. Reeves is the director there. Right, yeah. and yeah. I've met with, and again, I, I apologize, I'm drawing a blank on the one. Well, I, I tell you what, you have really uh, <laughs> demonstrated that you have really worked hard in getting partnerships, you know, uh, to be, make this a successful venture here. Oh, I forgot one, and it's a very important one. Uh -oh. the, um, Cynthia Harris at the Employee Connection. Yes. She's been on your program, yes. and she just got a grant uh, from uh, an organization working, so she will be working with 20 youth, and she's putting together a program where she, they will partner with us, mm -hmm. with the College of Lake County, and with the Illinois uh, Extension, U of I Extension. Um, to do this program that they're doing. So um, it's catching this partnership. Right. Now, now, starting a not, not nonprofit is really a hard thing to do with everyone, but uh, what is your biggest obstacle? I think without a <laughs> doubt it's raising money. Um, <laughs> and it, I think it's, for, it's hard for every nonprofit but I think it's especially hard um, for um, nonprofits working with veterans because so many of us, um, if we don't have, have, haven't had children in the military, um, we don't have a personal experience mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. what these young men and women are going through. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said I really recommend that people, um, there are a number of very good documentaries that deal with um, the situation um, and then this movie that I talked about earlier um, because I think if people recognized what they what these young people are doing and giving up in order to protect us I mean people think it's very unusual both Lucan Paulus and I are Quakers and we don't believe in war but we believe very strongly that the young men and women who have gone off to protect us deserve to be taken care of okay. when they come back. Okay. And um, so, you know, part of uh, my mission in raising money is also a raising awareness for this situation because um, it's tragic. I mean, it used to bother me just to see the homeless in Chicago and know that most of them were Vietnam vets and I want to do everything I can to prevent my children and grandchildren from having to see lots of homeless unhappy veterans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, Ellen, you mentioned uh, that, um, oh, you know, we really, we talked about helping veterans uh, define employment. Um, uh, what specifically is happening in this regard? Well, uh, as I said, the, the most specific things are having to do with um, l helping them to, if, if they're at all interested in doing anything with horticulture, and that doesn't necessarily, as I said, mean having farms. Uh, mm -hmm. It can also mean working with, in landscaping or doing other things. Um, or in different f forms of um, dealing with the agriculture. One of the programs that we are really interested in working with is, w or starting, duplicating, I guess is the word that 
um, I wanted to use. There's a program in, in Chicago called the Farm on Ogden, and um, it's working at creating jobs, not only through having people be um, growing the produce, but also yeah. preparing it, also preparing it so that it can go into um, schools and it can be sold directly to uh, institutions and stuff because that's almost impossible now. The kitchens and schools and most institutions aren't designed to ha have a bunch of dirty carrots come into their kitchen, you know, and then be washed and chopped up. They're used to getting everything in bags and just opening them up and they don't have the counter space or the, the equipment to deal with it. So um, that's another part of the um, a, a employment process. Um, but the, for people that are interested in really going into horticulture, um, having this connection with the College of Lake County, the college has an incredible sustainable agriculture um, certification and mm. um, veterans can use their GI Bill and go back to school. And even if they don't want to go through the whole certification, they can go back and take courses and then, of course, they can use it to supplement their income because if they start growing healthy ve vegetables to feed their families, then, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's a big boon um, to their ec economics. Now, uh, what do you do in your leisure time activities, <laughs> if you have any? Well... <laughs> <laughs> I have been very, very fortunate in my life. I, I have, uh, we love to travel. My oh. partner, Wally Winter, and I okay. love to travel. Um, and we will be going east twice oh. um, this fall. Or no, we'll, we, we'll be going just to Michigan once and then to, to the east coast. We've already been to Ohio. As I said, we're veteran. I mean, we're uh, Quakers, so we spend a week at our Quaker gathering. Okay. And um, uh, okay. we also have a place, a very small place up in Wisconsin, a little, what, what could be a farm, but we're not farming it. Um, and we just were there and went to um, plays at the American Players Theater. Mm -hmm. But I have to say that I'm a, the majority of my life right now is focused on growing healthy veterans. Oh, this is, you know, when, when uh, the, the audience here growing healthy veterans, you know, they, I know the, the hair stood up on top of the head. What does she mean by growing healthy veterans? Right. And you've done an outstanding uh, job of uh, explaining it. And hopefully we can get, uh, you know, many volunteers, you know, to... Uh, that would be great. We'd and, love and, to see and, people. And how do they get in contact with you again? They can go to our website and go to the page that is uh, where our board of directors is and there are telephone numbers under uh, Lucan Paulus's name and under my name and under Marshall Fox. So our two co-founders, Lucan Paulus and Marshall Fox, um, both have the, do the most in r arranging work for volunteers, but if they call me, I'll put them in touch with the right person. Just, just, just tell me for our, I'm sure our listening audience want to hear. What is it that keeps you going? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, I think what keeps me going <laughs> is having a mission, a real mission in life. Uh, I feel very fortunate because I've had a wonderful life, but I if there was an, I haven't done anything that I believe in as much as I believe in what I'm doing right now. And I, to be in my 70s and so, somehow I have something that just really speaks to me. 70, you look uh, like over 50. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, well, you look over 52, <laughs> Dr. Brooks. <laughs> well, I'm only 85. I so, am. Well, yeah. I hope I look as good at 85 as you do. <laughs> right. Well, uh, you mentioned your emphasize your, ult your ultimate goal. Because I mentioned it because um, you didn't tell us about your earlier pursuits, which were in sales, right? Right. Well, I started out um, as a manufacturer's rep. No, I guess I started out 
um, before that running a cooking school and oh. my children were very young. Mm -hmm. And then I, um, when the Neiman Marcus opened their first store in Chicago, I ran what was called the Petro Petrosian Boutique, mm -hmm. where I sold smoked salmon and caviar, oh. something very different from what I do today. But, um, and then I went as, and I was a manufacturer's rep, repping um, gourmet foods, and one of the lines that I repped was a coffee line. Uh, surprisingly, it was from Seattle. And mm -hmm. so I ended up going and working, and living and working in Seattle, selling coffee. And then I came back to Chicago, and I've sold wine. And um, mm -hmm. then, as I said, I've uh, now, all of a sudden, I'm very, very involved in wanting to see healthy food, not only for veterans, but for all of us, because yeah. um, the obesity problems in this country and all of that, so much of it stems from not eating the right thing, not eating healthy food, not giving our gut the kinds of um, things that, that our body requires. And so I'm just, uh, excited to be able to do my one little part and hopefully as uh, Suzanne Brown who is the recreational therapist said to me you know if one veteran comes to me afterwards and tells me that this has made a difference that's yeah. all I can ask yeah. and that's wh what I feel too. This is amazing it uh, uh, appears to be twofold uh, you want to ensure that not only veterans but everyone eats the Right foods? Right foods, right, yes. And you mentioned about the great percentage of foods of uh, what, the, outs outside of the? Outside of the, I mean, the only, it's such a small percentage are grown here, uh -huh. and the majority are grown in the West Coast, um, but I have seen carrots in a store that were from China. Oh. Now that's really frightening to me because number one, you have no idea how they were grown, what they were grown with, but by the time they get all the way here from China, the nutritional value is nil, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's just important that we start growing food to eat here. And I'm a big environmental a activist, actually my husband is even more of an environmental activist, but the idea of transporting all this food all mm -hmm. the way across the country to feed us mm -hmm. when historically, as I said, this was the bread basket. This is where good healthy food was grown. And um, there are more and more studies that show that by growing good healthy food, um, families can make a decent living. Now we wanted, one, another project that we want to uh, initiate is finding ways that farmers, small farmers, have multiple options of selling their food as opposed to just in farmers markets or, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I think it's very possible that we could start feeding a lot, a much larger percentage of the county. And especially with hoop houses and extended growing seasons because the hoop house we can grow and probably through December mm -hmm. and then start again in February mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. with client the climate the way it is that we might be able to continue growing year-round so you know the vision that you have is a um, realistic uh, vision a friend of mine lives in Hawaii um, mentioned about lettuce for example has to be imported from uh, to Hawaii, right? Right. And she has uh, acres of land that she's raising lettuce. Now, who would th th think about lettuce? But she's doing quite well Be and because it's cheaper for uh, to provide lettuce to the l l local and then to, then to um, uh, trans have it transported into Hawaii. Right, right. This is amazing. And, oh, I, I mentioned about, did I mention about process Food to well, processed we're, we're food. We're just starting to talk about the yes, processed yeah. food. Yeah. And how how damaging damaging it is for the health of many many people. Right, right. Now, what about uh, community support? 
you mentioned about your your board, but is there other community support? I guess if you get enough support from your board, you can well, you know, be successful. We're getting a lot of support. Um, in the garden in North Chicago, yeah. we had our grand opening and we had over 40 people that came. Oh, yeah. The mayor came. Um, Alderman, uh, our Alderman Bobby Allen. Allen was not able to come, but he has come by the garden. Um, I think that the, the community support is going to be terrific. And I think the, the support that Jim has found in the community of Gurney, um, the mayor really went to bat to get our, um, the zoning done for him and stuff. They're very excited about having this. The mayor of Gurney. Of Gurney, yes. Oh, that's uh, Kovarik? The uh, mayor of Kovarik, yeah, uh, yes. It's a woman, I know, yeah. all I know that. Yeah, uh, Kovarik, I think, I, I know she's been on the program uh -huh. a, a several times. Great person, great, great person, yeah, yeah. Corbin and so forth, you know. Well, I, I tell you what, you, uh, you, have, you have to be very passionate to be successful, right? Well, I think it helps. Yeah, yeah, I, um, but I guess it helps in any, in any endeavor. In any endeavor. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking with Ellen Ewing, President, Board of Directors of a program called Growing Healthy Veterans. We hope that you have enjoyed it as much as she has enjoyed presenting it uh, to you. This has been Community Forum. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host. <laughs>